You're likely used to the adventures of Earth's Mightiest Heroes, the exciting characters and spectacular Spider-Man, or the layered story of Wolverine and the X-Men. This really was the peak of Marvel content in the early 2010s, the golden age of Marvel animation so to speak. These really were the shows that raised me. When I was 12 or 13 after school, these were the shows I'd watch. However, there was a show before school each morning, a show that was a massive celebration of everything Marvel. They had introduced me to the likes of The Abomination, Murdoch, Miss Marvel, The Silver Surfer, and many other Marvel characters. That show was the Superhero Squad. I would say tonally, the superhero squad parodies the Marvel Universe in a similar way Brave and the Bold does, tongue in cheek poking fun at the sillier aspects of those universes while celebrating them too. If you've seen Brave and the Bold, you know it's an earnest, charming celebration of the Bronze Age of DC Comics, and it doesn't take itself too seriously. So when I say that superhero squad makes Brave and the Bold look adult in comparison, you can really see how I'm framing the superhero squad. Look, a lot of it is juvenile, kids jokes make up a lot of the show, a lot of the show you could passively watch whilst flicking on your phone. So a good question is Mitch, why are you even trying to bother with this show? What's so good about it? Well, I'm glad you asked. Superhero Squad, when it cuts the shit and sneaks in adult jokes, is comedic gold. When I was a kid, I saw this show likely how it was intended for kids. I saw the bright colours and the goofy moments. Some superheroes in a city called Superhero City that fend off villains held back by a big gate who reside in Villainville. Yeah, it's not trying to be complex. It's not trying to be groundbreaking or thought-provoking, it's simply a kid's show. But since getting Disney+, Plus, I decided to revisit the show, only to find out an entire layer to this show that I was missing out on. As I mentioned before, there's some jokes more geared towards adults, not in a crude way, just ones an older audience might appreciate. Like when you're talking to a girl, what's the first thing she always asks you? It's your height, isn't it? It's a big thing for a lot of guys that a lot of guys are insecure about, and this show has got height jokes. <laughs> now what's the bird view? I'm 5'11", okay? And it's more than just that. It even references other shows and movies, whether it's quickly showing versions of these characters from Earth Mightiest Heroes, Such weird apparitions. Or the surfer making fun of Storm's ridiculous quote from X-Men 1. So that is what happens to a toad when it is hit by lightning. What a letdown. The show is full of moments like this that make it super interesting for a diehard Marvel fan like myself. In that way, it was truly a celebration of everything Marvel. Something that I really love about the show is the characters, and not in the character journey kind of way that I would typically approach things, there's not much of that here. Just how they're represented, how they completely overemphasize stereotypes about them for comedic effect. Unfortunately, Reed is indisposed. He's in a delicate negotiation to avert a catastrophic incident. You can't stay mad at me forever. How was I supposed to know that it was your birthday? Alright, for those that don't know, Reed is essentially the absent father type. He neglects Sue all the time. And they've turned it into a joke. It's amazing. Been there, dude. Not with Sue Storm anymore. And this goes for other characters too. Cap is known as the soldier frozen in time. So they took that literally and had him constantly in military mode, referencing the past. Those were the days. Hot jazz and skinny eyebrows. Uh-huh. Or they'll have him amazed at modern technology. Golly gee, microwaves are truly a modern miracle. Oh, hey, Cap. I just love how unpolitically correct he is. Thanks for the save, lady. Oh, these liberated women of today. Equal pay for equal work, I say. See you around the USO. Some characters that were definite standouts to me were Thor and Modok. I feel like they just had some of the best lines or reactions to lines. You reek of Yes, and you reek of machine oil. What about it? Whether it's Thor worried about his golden hair or his outfit. Hmm. Don't these leggings make me look fat? <laughs> <laughs> You're just big bone. Like I said, Murdoch also gets some great lines. As a smaller character in stature, he gets overlooked a lot. A kind of joke of a villain. I like what you have done with the place. You do? Well, there's no accounting for taste. Seems a little bit D-U-L-L -L to me. So instead of being forgotten about, they play that up. I heard from a friend of a friend of a cousin of a friend that Iron Man once said, Your voice reminds him of fingernails on a chalkboard over a loudspeaker during a train wreck. Iron Man said that. Can you believe it? 
He what? In a way, having his lines undercut to great effect. Sheesh, what a grouch. I can comment if I want to. You're not the boss of me. The writers clearly understand the perceptions audiences have of these characters and want to play on that. He's nothing but a head. Characters, in a sense, are taken to 110%. Miss Marvel being an obnoxiously strong independent woman in the comics. You know, one of those types that'll let you know that they can do anything a guy can do. Like, we get it. Well, they play on that, making her some cranky alpha female. I want this man off the team. Begging Miss Cranky Pants' is pardon, but you don't get to decide who's on or off the team. He needs to be held accountable. This helicarrier is... A, a shield, shield facility. facility. It isn't just Miss Marvel either. It's literally every character that is exaggerated. Doctor Strange is, well, strange. The Punisher is ultra gloomy. Even the Surfer, being Marvel's philosophical observer, he's parodied as a stoner skater. I just love it. Elderly human, I will assist you. Ah! I wanted to cross in the other direction, you silver stumble bum. Ah! No need to thank me, good citizen. Do you know how many people my age I could name who are like this? Now I haven't said much for the story of this show and I think that's because it takes a backseat to the antics and comedy. Regardless, it's pretty basic for both seasons. Essentially, Doctor Doom and Iron Man are using their forces, competing to find fractals of a broken infinity sword. The second season has a similar concept, just swapping out the fractals for the infinity stones and the gauntlet. Essentially what we have is an episode template where we have a MacGuffin our heroes have to chase and some sort of ultimate weapon we work towards throughout the season. What this does is allow episodes to be self-contained stories while still adding to the larger narrative. Whilst there is a story there, I wouldn't say it holds much weight or contributes much to my enjoyment of the show. The Infinity Sword by the end of Season 1 is pretty useless in the wake of Galactus who eats the thing. You don't have another one of those little snacky swords, do you? The Infinity Gauntlet arc of Season 2 definitely holds more weight with its moving characters, but it's not something that takes precedence over the jokes or the cameos from the Marvel Pantheon at any point. You know who I am, the man you stole the Soul Stone from, Adam Warlock. I feel like Season 2 definitely feels more comfortable with getting strange, getting to see a lot of characters a lot of kids would have no clue about. I myself had no clue about at the time. Nebula, Captain Marvel, Ronan, Adam Warlock, I could go on. In Season 2 they definitely tried to strike a balance between the serious action and a plot with heart and fun. Herbie trying to fall in love in an almost wall -y kind of way was adorable to watch as that sits in the backdrop of the action of the episode. So what you have is a nice balance between the fun and levity and the action on plot. That being said, Herbie trying to shack up with a robot wasn't the only romance that made me smile. Miss Marvel's cringy relationship with Captain Marvel was hilarious to watch, seeing as we got to see that relationship through the eyes of Iron Man. Masky Boo, Cosmic Shield! Masky Boo? A worthy pet name. And the finishing sentence thing. Oh, so good. I'm not sure how much more we can take. About 30 seconds by my calculations. His cosmic awareness also helps him finish other people's sentences. Yeah, I figured that out. Like, holy shit. Can't you use your cosmic awareness to help defeat the Dark Surfer? Dude, do you have any idea how, how irritating that is? You bet. Self-awareness is a saving grace for this show and for Brave and the Bold, to sit back and understand how silly all this is. Hey, where did this thing come from? <laughs> no wonder. Something Super Hero Squad does that I absolutely love is making the viewer aware that they're aware it's a show itself, poking fun at story structure and pacing. Ready, squaddies? Time to get away! Too early in the show. All right. This level of self-awareness just works and provides a couple of laughs towards the show's end. How much longer? I'm guessing it'll be ready toward the end of the episode. Super Hero Squad has a bunch of jokes I wouldn't think that have in a show like this. Even in the negative zone, they use the metric system. Everything from saying women aren't funny to internet search history jokes. You regularly visit the following websites. Hey, hey! Look, I love it. It's just surprising to see a show so self-aware of how dumb it all is sometimes. Like how villains always waffle on. And the source of all my power. Uh, if you're worried about people taking it, stop telling people what it is, where it is, and how powerful it is. This sort of ties into the self-awareness thing, but I'll always appreciate a show that doesn't talk down to kids. Whilst the visuals may say otherwise, the dialogue, if kids pick up on it, will show that they're not talking down to kids at all. I heard it was because they thought kids would try to imitate the human torch. Urban legend. Kids are too smart. They're not gonna do something just because they see the human torch doing it on television. <laughs> I would look good with an earring on my butt. Oh, here, let me give him my credit card number. 
Sure, this show is simplistic, condensing complex arcs into dense, quick stories. Planet Hulk is a great example of this, a story that they managed to condense into 20 minutes. But that condensing doesn't take from the overall messages of the story or the adversities the heroes have to overcome. Beta Ray Bill earning his stripes being a great example of this. In 20 minutes, making a coherent story where he earns his role as Thor. I would say that the Superior Squad is less of an Avengers show and more of an overall Marvel show. Some episodes more X-Men heavy, some more Fantastic Four heavy, some more cosmic or prehistoric. Regardless, it's a funny show that respects the source material but plays with it to make some funny moments. Some of the funny moments are a little simplistic. Uh -uh. Yon toast landed jam side up. Oh. Is against the laws of both nature and breakfast! Superior Squad was my first exposure to the larger Marvel Universe. Whilst I didn't understand most of the characters at the time, it allowed me to have a loose understanding of them, so when I grew up and started to see these characters in the movies, I automatically had a grasp of who I was looking at and what to expect. The Infinity Gauntlet! Some assembly required. Look, do I think it's some hidden masterpiece? Oh my goodness, no. Is it some dense layered show? No, but it's incredibly self-aware and does a great job at acting as a celebration to everything in the Marvel Universe. Last thing I'm gonna say is Reptile was a fine point of view character to introduce us to the squad, kinda like how Jubilee was for the X-Men. And sure, Reptile was fine for the first season, but is easily the most boring just being a Beast Boy ripoff, and I'm glad they kinda got rid of him for season two, reducing his role in favor of introducing us to the Scarlet Witch. Also, Modoc here is way funnier than the Modoc show, and I'm not taking that back. You're just gonna have to deal with what I just said. Okay, that's me for the video. If you guys want to get in touch with me and have a quick little convo, feel free to message me on Instagram. Other than that, I want to know what you guys thought of the Superior Squad. Did you guys watch it as a kid? Was it past your time? Let me know in the comments below. I'll be interested to see what you guys have to say. With that being said, I will see you guys in the next video. Ciao.